Welcome back. In this part three, the third part in the series of international trade videos, we shall discuss about documentary credits. Let us have a look at definition of the credit. Under UCP 600 Article 2, credit is defined as an arrangement, however named or described, that is irrevocable and thereby constitutes a definite undertaking of the issuing bank to honor a complying presentation. So credit is how, can be however defined. It is an irrevocable undertaking, definite undertaking of the issuing bank to honor a complying presentation. What is the definition of compliance? A complying presentation is one <clears throat> where the presentation is in accordance with the terms and conditions of the credit, the applicable provisions of these UCP rules and international standard banking practice. And beneficiary is a party in whose favor the credit is issued. Beneficiary is a party who should comply by making a compliant presentation to become eligible for the payment. What is the buyer's responsibility under a documentary credit? Applicant is responsible to provide its bank with clear and precise instructions, avoiding any form of ambiguity, describe the terms and conditions that are to be complied with by the beneficiary, what the beneficiary should do to become eligible for the payment. The applicant should be very clearly stating in the letter of credit application so that it can be included in the letter of credit. Details and type of <coughs> the issuer data content of the documents that are to be presented. In addition to what should the goods, when it should be shipped, how it should be packed, etc. The details, the type of the documents required, who should be the issuer, who should issue the inspection certificate. Who should issue a test certificate? Test certificate is a type of document. The issuer who should issue it, inspection certificate or test certificate. What should be the data content? Should it say meat not fit for human consumption or should it say steel rusted but acceptable? What should be the content? All that should be clearly defined by the applicant. That is the buyer's most important responsibility while applying for a credit. Issuer's liability is to honor a compliant presentation. That is to pay at site if the credit is available by site payment, to incur a deferred payment undertaking and pay at maturity, or to accept a bill of exchange drawn and to pay at maturity. These three acts are called honor. Issuer's liability is to honor or to negotiate against a compliant presentation, which means in terms or in consistent with the document should be inconsistent, not inconsistent, but consistent with the letter of credit, the standard banking practices and the UCP rules. The independence principle. The credit by its nature is separate transaction from the sale or other contract on which it is based. Any indication is for reference only. Undertaking of the bank to honor, to negotiate or fulfill any other obligation is not subject to claims or defenses by the applicant resulting from its relation. Banks deal only in documents and not goods and banks need not secure, insure or store the goods. This is the independence principle. What is advising? Advising bank is a bank that advises a credit at the request of the issuing bank. Advising bank is mostly the beneficiary's bank. Advising bank ensures genuineness and completeness of the letter of credit. They certify only to that extent. What is confirmation of a credit? It is a definite undertaking of the confirming bank. Confirmation of a credit is a definite undertaking of the confirming bank in addition to that of the issuing bank. Issuing bank is an undertaking that they will honor a compliant presentation. Confirmation is a definite undertaking of the confirming bank to honor or negotiate the compliant presentation. They don't change anything in the terms of LC. The same LC they take and they give an additional promise to honor. What are discrepancies? A high number of documents presented under the letter of credit are discrepant. Presenter is requested to correct. Presenter is served a notice of refusal listing all the points of non-compliance or non-conformance and the status of the documents. Whether the party to whom documents have been presented, it may be nominated bank, it may be issuing bank, it may be confirming bank, whether the bank is holding the documents, whether the bank is returning documents, what has happened to the documents? 
that should be indicated in the refusal notice, discrepancy advice. The issuer or the applicant is approached seeking a waiver. The bank approaches the applicant seeking a waiver, but this is solely voluntary and not compulsory. This is the way discrepancies are handled. Regarding insurance, there should be a minimum cover for 110% of the gross value of the goods shipped. 110% of the gross value of the invoice covering the full shipment covered under the contract. That should be the requirement of an insurance cover. Insured cargo clause of the A is comprehensive and if that is called for, that will be good. If insured cargo clause of the A is there and even if there are some exclusions indicated in the policy, such a policy will be acceptable. What are the dates with regards to documentary credit? Documents when they are presented, we we'll have to keep in mind three important dates. One is the latest date for shipment, after which the BL should not say the goods have been shipped. That is date for presentation or presentation period. It should be the date on which the beneficiary presents a document to the nominated bank. Beneficiary cannot present after this date. This normally will be, for example, 21 days from the date of BL. And then comes the latest date for negotiation, for example, the expiry date. This is the date up to which documents can be presented to the bank in any case. After this, unless this day is a Sunday, documents will not be accepted by any bank when presented by the beneficiary. Documentary credit parties. The important parties to documentary credit are the applicant. The buyer of the goods or services, the requester of the credit is called applicant. Beneficiary. The supplier of the goods or services, the party in whose favor the credit is issued is called beneficiary. Advising bank. Bank that confirms on the genuineness and completeness to the beneficiary when the letter of credit is received. Nominated bank. Correspondent of the issuing bank authorized to honor a compliant presentation. Nominated bank is a bank authorized by the issuing bank to honor a compliant presentation. Confirming bank. This bank undertakes to honor in addition to and independent of the issuing bank undertaking. The confirming bank undertakes to honor in addition to and independent of the issuing bank's undertaking. Nominated bank. Nominated bank is a bank that pays with recourse to the beneficiary upon authorization by the issuing bank to handle the documents by nominating at the time of issuance. Issuing and confirming bank normally pay without recourse because they have given their undertaking to pay. Document credit amendment. Document credit is effective immediately upon issuance. It cannot be amended without explicit approval of the beneficiary and confirming bank if any. Document credit cannot be amended without the explicit consent of the beneficiary. Examining a presentation. <coughs> Banks usually have five banking days after the receipt of the documents to determine compliance. Banks normally have five banking days. Description in the invoice should be consistent with the credit. Documents should be presented within 21 days of shipment. Non-documentary conditions may be disregarded. Issuer, content and format of non-standard document should be specified in the LC. Data and documents should not be in conflict with the data in any other document or the credit. Data and the document should not be in conflict with data in other documents or credit. What are the use and bills? When the payment terms are say 60 days after shipment, it does not mean that the issuing bank will release the shipping documents to the applicant upon receipt of acceptance. In the normal course, the buyer is eligible for the documents only against payment on due date. Buyer can claim the documents only upon payment, which is he will be doing on 60th day after shipment. But of course, the applicant can get the documents before because goods would have reached the port and he needs to get it released. And he can release the goods, but only against trust receipt. Applicant can collect the documents from the bank against trust receipt. In any case, issuing bank should pay on due date for the compliant documents. But even at that point, issuing bank may not give the documents to the buyer unless the buyer pays for. This is not the case in documentary collection. In a documentary DA collection, the documents are leased against acceptance and the buyer can take delivery of the goods and sell it in the market. 
and if he has money on due date it will be debited and the presenting bank will pay the remitting bank so this is the difference in handling of the use and bills in very technical fashion what are the forms of credit transferable credit is used when importers use the intermediaries to get the goods sourced from oems these can be made available to one or more second beneficiary in whole or in parts red cross credit or advance payment credit packing credit this allows advising bank to make funds available to the beneficiary to procure and ship to be detected back from the proceeds of the compliant presentation if no presentation is made issuing bank and applicant should reimburse the advising bank with interest red cross credit is a situation or a structure where issuing bank authorizes the beneficiary's bank to make funds available for procuring the goods for shipment if no presentation is made and if this advance made is not recovered from any bill proceeds the beneficiary bank will claim the same from issuing bank along with interest revolving lcs these are used for shipments of goods same goods same specification regular intervals value of the lc is reinstated say every month it is depending upon period or upon every shipment there is a specific trigger value can be cumulative also there could be a cap on number of revolvements number of reinstatements or the maximum amount payable etc these are revolving lc these are different forms of the letter of credit standby standby can be used as a guarantee this is a type of credit one is a documented letter of credit where documents are submitted for getting payment another is a standby credit they are not direct payment mechanism standby are not direct payment mechanism but a default payment mechanism the issuer is not responsible for the breaches in underlying contract issuer is not responsible for the breaches in underlying contract issuer is only obliged to pay against the documentary demand in a normal commercial credit claims are lodged after shipment with evidence of performance that is bl etc in a standby claims are lodged in case of non payment that is in case of non performance with the evidence of non performance for example invoice has been raised and invoice has not been paid in many times this evidence is not called for only a documentary claim is called for as always applicant has to indemnify the issuer to reimburse the claims the fees and other costs